All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to what I believe is lecture. Well, let me be sure about it. Lecture 15. Uh, we had started talking about the uncertainty principle in our last class. And um, so, uh, are there any questions so far? Okay. If there are any questions, you can, of course, uh, unmute yourself and ask your question anytime you want, okay? So, what um, I had talked about was the fact that if you have two operators which, which don't commute, or first, you should consider the case when they do commute, when they do commute, they have a set of simultaneous eigenstates. And it is because of that, uh, that fact that they have simultaneous eigenstates. Uh, can I just ask if my voice is clear or if there is any interruption? It's clear, sir. Okay. It's because of this fact that uh, they have the same set of eigenstates that one can measure, one can perform a measurement, a simultaneous measurement of, of both uh, the observers. But if there is a, if they don't commute, then there is an unavoidable uncertainty in the simultaneous measurement of these two observers, right? And that again can be traced back to the fact that they do no longer share a set of eigenstates. Then uh, now in one of the previous, in the first homework set I had asked you to calculate, uh, uh, the uncertainties uh, for the particle in a one-dimensional box, right? So uh, if you do this, right, you should get an answer which is greater than uh, h bar by two. And what is delta x and delta p? Uh, did you all have any difficulties in, in doing this calculation? Okay. Uh, Tanuja, uh, Tanuja, if there is disturbance, audio disturbance, you can also type your uh, question or your comment in the chat. Okay, uh, so again, like I was saying, if there were any difficulties in doing that calculation, then please do let me know, okay? All right, so uh, this is the general form of um, Heisenberg's uh, uncertainty principle, okay? And uh, there's a small mistake somewhere here, I think. There has to be a factor of H bar down here, otherwise you will not get the right thing. Okay, and what this, uh, so uh, as the another exercise for you all, I'd ask you to show that the eigenvalues of Hermitian operators are real and the eigenstates of Hermitian operator form an orthogonal basis of H. So uh, this is probably one of the things which I have, should have done in one of the first classes, but anyways. Um, so, let me let me let me um, quickly demonstrate why why that is the case. Okay, so because uh, commission operators. Okay, so it's a uh, fairly easy to see. Let's say we have some operator A, and it has some eigenvalue lambda and eigenstate psi, okay? Now the fact that A is Hermitian implies that A is equal to A adjoint, okay? So if you want to use this 
uh, this property the obvious thing to do is to just take the adjoint of this equation so if you take the adjoint of both sides of this equation what do you get you get psi bra a dagger right is equal to lambda star right and now lambda is just a number remember this is an eigen value so it's a, it's a number at most can be a complex number so when you take the adjoint you will just get a complex conjugate right and now a dagger is equal to a so i can write this as by a right i can replace this dagger with a is equal to psi and the star right now i can uh, take the inner product of both of these sides right if i take the inner product what do i get i get psi a square psi right so i'm taking this and i'm contracting it with this right taking the dot product well in uh, the complex vector space so the dot product involves the uh, the both the bra and the check vectors and when i take this object and contract it with this what do i get i get lambda square modulus lambda square and then sine sine right so we'll we'll take this to be equal to 1 we can always do that right and so let me i always get the proof uh, just quickly let's get up I'm sorry. There is a bit of a disturbance in the in the background. Uh, please uh, just give me a second. Let me request. I'm back. So, yeah. Apologies uh, for that. My uh, I have a family which is can be just as. Uh, unaware of <laughs> the fact that a class is going on as 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 in your course right okay so um what was what was i saying let's see uh the 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 ah yes 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 uh we we don't we don't take the inner product of these two what we do is the following so i take this expression and i uh, contract it with with the psi on the left so i get psi a dagger psi on the right i get lambda like this right and then i take this the expression and i do the same thing now i contract it with psi on the right side right so i get psi and if anybody doesn't follow any of the steps please let me know okay now this expression right i have so now we can use the adjoint property so i have psi a dagger psi right so this is this is just a number right but i can take the adjoint also adjoint will just be equal to the complex conjugate of this quantity and if i apply the adjoint though 
to each portion of each uh, element here. I'll get psi a dagger psi, right? So this is equal to this expression, right? Why? Because a dagger is equal to a. Yes, if there's a question, please ask. Right? So if I if I look at these two expressions, what do I uh, what do I find? I find that lambda uh, is equal to lambda star. Right? Which implies that lambda is a real number. Okay, so the eigenvalues of a Hermitian operator are, uh, are real. And uh, then we have the statement about orthogonality and completeness of the eigenvectors Sadanan, please mute yourself. Thank you very much. Unless you have a question. Okay, and then we have uh, the statement uh, that the eigenstates um, form a ortho orthogonal complete basis. So what does that mean? That means, first of all, that if we have any two eigenstates of a Hermitian operator, we have any two eigenstates, which means that lambda one is not equal to lambda two, right? Then the following is true which is that psi one, psi two, the dot product, inner product is zero, okay? So this is the first claim, right? I have to prove this, obviously. And the second claim is that uh, if you uh, take any state, in your Hilbert space, then this state can be written as a superposition of eigenstates of your Hermitian operator. Okay. So the the proof of the the first part, let me call this. is as follows. So we have the statement, right? That phi one and phi two are both eigenstates of uh, A, right? Uh, one second. 
Okay. I guess I should know about this, right? Uh, but no. Forget it. Okay, so we take both of these expressions. Right? And from this expression, what we do is we take the the adjoint. So if we take the adjoint of this expression, what do we get? We get phi two a dagger, right? Is equal to phi two lambda two star. But a dagger is equal to a, right? Why? Because a is Hermitian. Phi two a. All right. So now what we can do is we have these two uh, statements. We have that phi two a uh, is equal to psi two star. Oops, careful, careful, phi two. We have this statement and we have this statement. These are the two statements, right? So we want to prove the, the, the orthogonality, right? So how can we do that? Um, well, we can uh, take this expression and multiply by uh, by let me right. So let me let me work it out here on the page. Okay. Okay, so these are the two expressions. Let me call this one, let me call this two. So what I'll do is I'll take one and take the inner product of one with psi two. And then I'll take two and take the inner product with psi one. Okay, so what will I get? I will get, sorry, pi, not psi. Pi one is equal to lambda one Phi one, phi one, and from the second one, I'll get phi two a phi one is equal to lambda two star. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. This should be phi two, phi one. And this will also be a phi two. Okay. Now we can subtract both sides. If you subtract both sides of this expression, what do we get? We get lambda one. The left hand side of the equation is the same, so we'll get zero. On the right hand side, we'll get lambda one minus lambda two star. Phi two phi one is equal to zero. Okay. Now, if these two eigenstates are the same, so if phi one is equal to phi two, right? This means that lambda one is equal to lambda two, and what the equation tells us is that lambda one minus lambda star is equal to zero which means lambda one is a real number. So that, that proves the first statement that we had here uh, that we proved in this part, right? The second is the, that if phi one is not equal to phi two, right? Then this implies that lambda one is not equal to lambda two. So if this expression is zero as an identity, 
then the, o the only way this is possible is that if phi 2, phi 1 is equal to 0. All right, so I hope, I hope that this derivation is, is clear now. Uh, the, the, remaining as, the remaining part is that, uh, so we have proved the orthogonality of the eigenstates, we have proved the, the reality of the eigenvalues. Um, and then the next, uh, the remaining question is, So this is eigenvalues are real. Eigenstates are orthogonal. Okay, any questions so far? Now the remaining uh, part that we have to show is we have to show completeness. We have to show completeness, which means what is completeness? That is the statement that, that these eigenstates form a complete basis uh, for your Hilbert space. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let us make this assumption. Let us assume this to be the case, okay? Let us assume that we can write a, a given state psi in this form, right? Now, Let us take phi j and contract both sides of the expression on the left with phi j. Okay, so I get on the left here, I get in a product of phi j with psi. On the right, what do I get? I get summation of lambda i phi j phi i. Right? What is this quantity? The delta ij, right? Because we have, that's what we have just proven, right? That if phi one is not equal to phi two, then the inner product is zero. So we can write this as lambda i j delta i j. Then there's a sum over i. So if you take the sum over i, you will be left with lambda j. So you can write this as phi j psi is equal to lambda j. And so your state psi can be written as summation of uh, so I'll I'll replace this expression for lambda j over here or I will write it as lambda i instead. And I'll just make a slight notational change. I'll write put lambda i to the right of this expression. Okay. And what is lambda i? Lambda i becomes phi i, right? So now this expression is just a, a number. This is the coefficient of psi in this expansion and phi i is our eigenstate, right? Now, if you look at if you look at the, the to this expression, it can be viewed in another way. So rather than viewing this as a number, you can view this object, this object which is a bra followed by ket. You can think of this as an operator. Okay. And why is it an operator? So let, let me let me just uh, talk about that for one second. 
So let's say you have any two states, and I look and ask, what is this object, right? So this is called the outer product. Okay, and in terms of vectors, right? In terms of ordinary real vectors. So let's say you have two uh, two states. I'll use A and B. Then. in terms of vectors what does this correspond to this corresponds to a dot b right but to be to write this properly what i need to do is i need to take a transpose and then multiply that by b right okay so if i have something like this what does this mean right so these ket vectors these are column vectors the bra vectors are row vectors right so now i have a bra vector which is a row vector and this is a column vector okay so let me write it like this b1 b2 bn a1 a2 an right now if i multiply out if i perform the multiplication using the usual rules of matrix multiplication what do i get anybody am i still connected are you all there hmm and and my sorry sir n by n matrix All right so we get a n by n matrix whose elements are b1 a1 b1 a2 right so this is an n by n matrix right and what is n n is the dimension of a hilbert space right so this object what is this object this object is a vector right and if we uh, are talking about complex numbers then you have to put a, a star here because when you take this this adjoint that's a complex transpose so you will put a star in all of this over here right so if i have something like this b a this is an operator which acts on my my hilbert space is this part clear to everybody if this is not clear please ask me and i will clarify it i will repeat it slowly until it is clear i can't see anybody's expression so i don't know because hey, if i was a, if this was a physical class then from expressions i can tell whether you are following or not but now i can't do any face reading so you have to tell me well it's clear for you priya but i don't know if there is anybody in the class for whom it's not clear so if it's not clear for any of you please tell me what might not be clear and i will explain it dishika is this, is this fine 
Yes, sir. Yeah. Anaga. Yes, sir. Pritam. Yes, sir. Sadanand. Sadanand, I, I have you been able to follow this discussion? Sadanand. Okay, so I guess it's not clear for everybody. Please, uh, this is very important. Okay, this is this is very important in everything we do going forward. So please make sure that you understand what is going on. Okay. So now we can look at this expression again from this perspective. And what is that perspective? That this object is an operator. And so this is an operator and it's acting on the state psi. Okay. So let me uh, look at, write this equation again. I have psi is equal to Okay, now I put it in brackets to express the fact that this is a separate object. And I'll write this as an operator O of I. Right? What is I? I labels the eigenstates. Right? Not not the not the elements of the vectors in any basis, but the it labels the individual eigenstates, the separate eigenstates. And so what is this, this expression, this whole expression can be written in this way, summation of i, let me put a hat over here, hat, i like this, okay? So this is a this is a sum of all of those operators. So sum of all the operators is another operator. And the right hand side here has to be equal to the left hand side. What does that tell us about this object? What does this have to be? Bharti? I have a state psi and I'm saying that some operator multiplied by that state gives me the same state. So what does that operator have to be? Bharti, can you tell me? Shubham? Are you guys there or not? Actually, I don't even know if you if you are there. Maybe you have gone off to have some breakfast and play burst crackers on Diwali. So at least if I'm calling your name, please. Yes, just, sir. Just answer. Say yes or no. Even if you don't know the answer, just say something, right? So so what is what does this have to be equal to, Bharti? Do you know? It's a eigen state, eigen value. Shubham? Shubham, if you are not there, then I will remove you from the meeting since you're not responding. Okay. All right. So, Ananya. Can you tell me what this has to be equal to? Should be one, right? One, but what do we call one in operator uh, language? So it has to be equal to one, but is that the number one? Uh, I'm not sure. Harsh, 
what does this so have identity to do? matrix identity matrix yes yeah? we'll refer we'll write it as in this way right as the identity okay now so what this tells me is that if i take this these five of i and what are these these are the eigen states of my commission operator remember then this is equal to the identity matrix right so this is again uh, this is again very very important and let me just put a big box around it to stress the fact that it is very important what this tells you it tells you that your set of eigen states is a complete set okay it tells you that if you have any state psi it can be written in this form it can be written in this form where phi i are the eigen states of my permission operator so this gives me the proof of completeness okay excuse me sir yeah uh, is it because this operator cat psi and bra psi i has the mm. dimension of hilbert space we are calling it complete no it's it's complete because the sum of these operators is equal to the identity okay right so i can take any state so this implies that that for any state in my hilbert space i i get this the i get this expression right i can take this identity operator multiplied by this by the state right i can i can write this right this is always true because this is just the identity but what this tells me now is that the state psi can be written in this way right what is this this is an expansion of psi in the basis phi i and these are the coefficients of that expansion this is equal to lambda i right so because this is the identity this is true for all all states so this forms a uh this this forms a a complete basis now this brings us to another uh concept which is the concept of a projection or a projection operator okay so what 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 is a projection operator a project a projection operator has the let me give you the properties first okay if you have a, an operator p which is a projection operator it it satisfies this uh this constraint this equation which means that p square is equal to itself
okay now if you look at any of these operators right so this is a single operator which i called o of i right what does this operator do okay this operator first of all let me take the square of this operator let me take o of i squared o of i squared will be will be this expression right this is o of i squared now here i have in this expression i have this phi i phi i i have the inner product of phi i with self right so i can write that as 1 i can take these states to be normalized and i can write this as 1 and since this is equal to 1 what i am left with is this copy of the this i am left with this bra vector and this ket vector right what is this? this is equal to the operator itself right so this object satisfies this requirement now why are we calling it a projection operator again let me give you the example in terms of your vector notation which you are familiar with you are more familiar with right now this is for i am when i say hat over here this means these these are the basis vectors right not not operators please don't get confused between this hat and the other hat okay so these are basis vectors now how do i find a of i what do i do what you have learned is the following right that you take the dot product of a with, with the j basis vector doing so will involve taking this expression right and what is this this is delta ij so again if you sum over i here you will get aj right so this is aj but now let's be a little bit more careful when taking a dot product because a dot product between any two vectors the correct way to write it is is as a transpose times b right and then you apply matrix multiplication to this expression the rules of matrix multiplication that's what the dot product means right so when i'm writing down this a dot ej what i should be doing is i should be taking this ej transpose and then multiplying it by a and instead of a hat you know i'll just put a vector sign on top because i think you might forget that this is a vector in not an operator so i'll just put a vector right so this is what i actually mean by the by the dot product so um, if i put this on to the sorry amrish do you have a question okay so if i take ej and multiply it by a like this right then on the right hand side what do i get i get summation of i a i right and ej transpose ei right is this fine
so now in this in this expression uh, recording in from this from this expression again i can say that a of j right a of j is this quantity which is ej transpose a okay and i substitute this expression back in this so what do i get i get a vector a is equal to and now i'll write it like this i'll put the e of i on the left and a of i is just a number so i'll put the number on the right hand side and i'll write this expression like this ej transpose a right now you see i can collect these two terms right oh and sorry this has to be i because i am talking about a of i so it has to be i now in this expression what do you have you have a vector a column vector and you have a row vector yes so when i when i write this matrix multiplication e of i e of i transpose what do i get i get a matrix right i get an n by n matrix right and this matrix has to be equal to the identity matrix otherwise this both sides of this equation will not be satisfied right so this is exactly what i'm doing for uh with my with these vectors so when i write down uh sorry no no this will not be the identity my mistake the sum over all of these i's will be the identity so the identity will be the sum over and again remember this is not a dot dot product this is a proper matrix multiplication right so what do we have we have that this vector goes to the ket and this vector goes to the bra okay so anyways i i don't know if this is making much sense to you but i hope it is making sense so now what is this this matrix do if you take this matrix right and you multiply it by any vector okay so let me call this matrix um capital ei okay and this is a matrix so i'll put a tilde sign below it so if i take this matrix e of i and multiply by any vector a what is it giving me it is giving me it is giving me uh this what was the expression that i used a of i right it is giving me a of i multiplied by e of i 
So what does this matrix do when it acts on this vector? It projects, it projects this vector down to the ith basis vector. Okay, so this is this is your vector i, uh, sorry, a, and then you have some basis vectors. Let's say e1 and e2 for simplicity. We we'll just take that. What does it mean to project a vector? To me, to project a vector means to take this component, right? This is a1. This is a2. What is a1? It's equal to small like this, right? So this is a projection matrix. It takes the vector A and it projects it down to this other vector, which is along the one given direction, basis direction. And same thing for the other component. So that's why that's why this is called a projection matrix. Okay, so I guess I'll stop here because you all have class now. And uh, yep. Question. Again, uh, this whole bracket notation and all if you don't practice it if you don't work out these examples for yourself uh, it will not make any sense you will become completely lost and confused uh, so one thing that you can do um, see you can do some exercises and uh, let me give you a few of those exercises. They are from chapter, the first chapter of, of, of Sakurai, right? So Sakurai is one of the textbooks that I'm using for this course, right? Um, so let me give you these exercises. We have exercise 1.6, 1.7, A, um, 1.8, and 1.10 from Sakura. Okay. All right. So I'll see you all tomorrow morning. Well, day after tomorrow morning, have a happy Diwali. Okay. And a safe Diwali. If you have any questions, you can ask. Otherwise, I'll see you all on Friday. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.